I'm delighted to introduce one of the newest and super exciting portfolio company at Walden Catalyst, uh, Galileo. Uh, we partnered with uh, Battery Ventures to invest in Series A financing at Galileo in June this year. As you know, at uh, Walden Catalyst, uh, we are very focused on deep tech ideas around data and AI. And our partners uh, worked with the founders uh, who are ML experts from Google and Uber uh, for close to a year, both as uh, personal angel investors, as well as really understanding the market pain points uh, before we uh, participated in Series A. And without any further ado, uh, let me bring in the founder of Galileo, Vikram Chatterjee. Vikram, welcome. Thank you so much, Shankar. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining our conversation. You and your co-founders uh, have a long history of working together and also as ML practitioners. Uh, we would love to, for you to kick it off with the founder story of Galileo. Sure, happy to. So when I decided to start a company, which is around the October 2019 mark, my first phone call was to my now co-founder, Atindrio, who um, I knew because we'd gone to high school together we literally shared the same bench as we sat together in school. Uh, so there's a lot of trust that was already built up over the, over the many decades since then. Um, my other co-founder, I've known him since the first day we both joined at Google, which is around July, 2013. And uh, uh, we've known each other since then. And uh, initially I started out by just working with Atin in his garage, just tinkering with many different thoughts and ideas. Um, and what we realized was that we uh, we all started converging, me, Yash, and Atin started converging towards this same pain point that we were seeing ourselves, where we were leading these teams at uh, Google and Uber. So across the board, all three of us noticed that as our teams were building these machine learning models, it was very, very hard to figure out what data uh, should be going into these models. Data is the lifeblood of these machine learning models, but there was no tooling at all for figuring out what's the right kind of data that should be going into these models. How do you make sure that the quality of the data is high? Um, we had that big pain point ourselves. We fought hard to solve that at Google and Uber, and we realized that some of the techniques that we realized, that we figured out uh, can be very useful for the broader ML landscape. Um, because this problem is only going to balloon more and more over time. Uh, and that's why we left our uh, jobs at Google and Uber, and we went full-time in starting Galileo about a year and a half ago. Thank you, Vikram. I think every great company has an amazing founder story, and I think yours is uh, very similar. Uh, maybe a, a good segue would be to really talk about uh, what you've created as a data intelligence platform, what does it do, and why is this a very large opportunity? Yeah, so uh, if, if you think about it, machine learning right now is becoming pervasive. Almost every company is going to have machine learning in some shape or form. It's becoming like what software engineering used to be. Uh, so every company is going to be an ML company. ML is powered by data, and there is no good way right now to figure out what is the right data that's powering these machine learning models. Um, and that's a huge uh, issue that most of these companies are grappling with. And as machine learning becomes even more profoundly impactful within an organization, this problem starts ballooning. And now you can't go and start tweaking every single model and making sure that it has high data quality. You have to have a systemic approach towards this, which is algorithm driven. And so uh, that's where we decided to start Galileo with this idea of how can we move the uh, thinking around how data scientists are working with data quality today, which is a very soul-sucking part of their job where they have to manually go and look at Excel sheets and Python scripts to fix it. Can we completely flip the narrative and use a lot of the data-centric algorithms that are being built at research institutes like Stanford AI and others, some that come out of Google and Uber from our own work, and productize all of that so that the user gets this intelligent, amazing experience where they just add a few lines of code and they can get to all of the different errors that would have otherwise taken them many weeks. So the end result, which we're seeing with our customers is they get to uh, much higher performing models 10 times faster by focusing more on the data because the models have been commoditized. And so we call this the ML Data Intelligence Platform and are creating a new uh, category around this. And it's resonating a lot with our, with our customers. Thank you, Vikram. One of the 
things we learned as we uh, talked to the market is that these highly paid data scientists, when they come on board, they spend over 80% of their time uh, cleaning up the data uh, and, and doing very little time really focused on the algorithms. And, and as all things uh, we all know about, uh, garbage in, garbage out, so the data quality is not very good. The algorithms just don't get accurate uh, enough for production. So it sounds like your ability to kind of focus on that really addresses the problem that you saw at Google and Uber as well. That's correct. That's exactly correct. Uh, one other thing that will be very helpful, Vikram, to talk through is the use cases. There are, so ML, as you said, is all pervasive. Uh, it will become pervasive over the next five to ten years uh, in enterprises. But what type of use cases are we talking about? How will it really impact consumers and enterprises? Yeah, it's a great question. So when we think about use cases, you have to also go back to the heart of what kind of ML data quality problems did we want to solve? We can't solve for all of it at the same time. It's a very massive opportunity. We decided to divide this opportunity into what are the different kinds of data modalities that exist, right? So when you think of all of data in the world that's being used for ML, there is structured data, there is unstructured data. Unstructured data like text and images and speech makes up more than 80% of all of the data in the enterprises today, which is a very large amount of data. And it's starting to be tapped for ML. Uh, we decided to focus on companies that were using NLP for business critical use cases, which means they're using a lot of text-based data, document-based data. Uh, so what we're seeing from a use case perspective as of right now is applications across contact center AI, uh, customer experience businesses, uh, companies like uh, Zoom and DocuSign and Zendesk and a lot of banks as well, where they have conversational AI teams working on chatbots to help with their customer success, uh, uh, sales intelligence with companies like Gong coming about, Chorus, et cetera. There, these are all great use cases for uh, where NLP teams are struggling right now with figuring out what's the right data to work with. And that's where we're going to them and saying, great, you can use Galileo. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, maybe one other uh, question would be how you think about growing the company, especially in the context of uh, the macroeconomic situation of today, and also comment uh, on the kind of challenges that Galileo is facing today. Absolutely. The way we go to market right now is twofold. One is uh, selling directly to the buyers, uh, which is a top-down approach from a sales perspective. That is what we've been doing over the last eight to 10 months and have been uh, have seen some, a fair amount of success with, with just that. Um, what has been interesting there from a macro environment perspective is people are becoming much more sensitive to their budgets and PNL overall. And so when we go in and we sell the product, we lead with the fact that we are uh, here to make sure that you, your overall costs can reduce by 10x. You're reducing the amount of time that your data scientists have to create. So in effect, we are actually adding a few more data scientists to your team. And that's how we build them as well. That's the way we've been uh, going to these these players, and that resonates very deeply with them. The other go-to-market approach, which we are taking now with uh, uh, with our soft launch in September, is uh, a free version of Galileo. We're launching a version of the product which has fewer capabilities available for only one user, but it's on our cloud environment, and it's available for free. And that's also very good in this macro environment where people are uh, trying to de-risk their overall decision-making so they can go to our website, see the value immediately for themselves, self-select in, and then we can sell them from there. And if once they try the free, uh, the freemium product, then I guess uh, the additional features and the robust cloud uh, managed services offering really would be an enterprise-wide type deployment that may be a higher ASP and perhaps a longer, uh, longer term value for the enterprise. That's correct. Um, they prefer trying before they buy. This approach aligns with their decision-making process of the buyer. Makes a lot of sense, Vikram. Uh, one other uh, macro question, of course, we funded uh, you in June. And as we all know, uh, the venture environment over the last four or five months has, has tightened up quite a bit. And few companies uh, really got funded, I think, during this time. And congratulations for, uh, for raising a round during these uh, challenging time. Uh, 
the interesting thing here was you had choices. You had a lot of uh, investors who were interested in funding you. Uh, you did choose to work with uh, Walden Catalyst and Battery, and we're really thankful to you for that. But perhaps you could share uh, why you did that. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it came down to two big reasons. One, as I said before, it's all about the people. And the second was it was about um, how, uh, how, how much does the problem actually resonate uh, with, with the investors as well. Uh, and from a people perspective, we've had a relationship with uh, with Walden Catalyst since the very almost the day one of the company, to be honest, uh, we've known Lipu and since uh, March of last year, where we barely had like three people in the company, um, and we, he's been a big supporter of us and really deeply understands the uh, the problem space. And but the other part of this was just the uh, the fact that Walden Catalyst, amongst a lot of the other venture capital funds, came across as deeply technical and investing in a lot of very, very other, very strong ML uh, and AI companies, data focused companies uh, was a huge plus for us because we knew that it wasn't just the capital, it was also the intellectual capital that we were gonna be getting as a part of this, which is actually held true ever since we closed the round. Thank you, Vikram. That's really great to hear. Walden Catalyst is super excited about uh, joining arms with you and building a really great company here. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much.